this whole weekend is about becoming a tribe builder. I didn't know what the hell this meant when I was starting out and what the different types of tribes were and what they actually meant to my life. And then I've broken it down. There are three main tribes. There are your tribe of buyers. That's probably why all you guys are here. But there are also the support tribe and the team tribe. I would not be here without my support tribe and my team tribe. My business would not be successful without my support tribe and my team tribe. So this is my tribe buyers. My Facebook group, my paid programs, people come to my masterminds. I hear a lot of people in the digital marketing online entrepreneur space complaining about their clients. That's actually a reflection of themselves. I love my clients. You never hear me complaining about my clients. And like, I am so grateful for everybody here. I'm so grateful for you all investing into this event, which uh, you might have been like, oh, it's the first time he's throwing an event. There are probably only going to be 30 people there. Thank you so much, because I was worried about that too. <laughs> so my tribe buyers, and then my support tribe. Brad gave me such a great introduction. Thank you so much, buddy. Um, and he said that I was unique and special. I'm not unique and special. I've just surrounded myself with the right people. And Brad's one of them. We, uh, he actually invited me out to San Diego for three days, and then I didn't leave. <laughs> I flew in. I was supposed to be there for three days. I met uh, his roommate, his housemate, Kate, who is now my girlfriend. She's like, just stay with me. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> so there she is, my support tribe, Kate. Um, then uh, my family. So I love my mom, dad, and brother. Um, so since I've made so many changes, and you're going to see my story in a second here, like, my family has become so much stronger as well. And they support the crap out of me. My mom, dad, and brother, so supportive. Uh, and I'm so grateful for them. Um, and then uh, some people that fly in, like Eli Wild. That was really cool. I got to hang out with Tony Robbins, number one sales guy for a week. And we chat back and forth. He's in my support truck. Um, and then uh, Mike Sherbikoff, can you raise your hand? He runs an awesome foundation called the Greatness Foundation. Um, and we got to go down to Mexico to build a house back in April. Um, and I'm actually donating a house next year uh, for, uh, for a family in Mexico. And they're my support tribe, too. <laughs> and then my team tribe. You heard from Brad. I've gone through burnout. I've gone through breakdown. I went through adrenal fatigue, all of that. And what has helped me up is my team tribe. I was a solo entrepreneur for so long. And I was successful. But it was at the detriment of my health. And I burnt out over and over and over, trying to reach the next level of success, bouncing between 40, 50K per month, which is awesome. That was really cool. But I worked way too hard. And then I realized I can surround myself with amazing people working for me and have an amazing new tribe, a new team tribe, and really get to the next level that way. So my team tribe, you'll meet all of them this weekend. We're going to do breakout tables as well. So that's going to be really fun. You get to work uh, with uh, my team in a smaller, intimate environment. So that's pretty cool, but it wasn't always this way. So. Since I went to college until March of 2017, I went through depression. I was broke. I was drinking all the time, working nine to five. I was kind of chubby. I hated my life. I was depressed. 
I was taking Wellbutrin, I was taking Lexapro, didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And then April, I was just tired of it. I decided to control my life. And one quote that I started to live by was, I'm master of my fate, I'm captain of my soul. It's up to me. I need to make the changes. I can't keep being the victim here. I need to take control of my life. So I set a goal to quit drinking and lose 90 pounds in 20 days. What? Oh, uh, 20 pounds in 90 days. That would be impressive. I was really fat. And it was pretty cool. Around day 70, I went to the gym, the YMCA. I went about five, six times a week. I stared down at the, uh, at the scale. I was 162 pounds. I was 21 pounds lighter than I was 70 days ago, and I was completely sober. That changed everything for me. Holy crap, if I just put the work in to a goal and I accomplish it, oh, I can do anything that I want in my life. So I started my advertising agency, getting more confidence, I got my first client, I ran my first 5K, uh, and uh, I hate running. Uh, so that was a big accomplishment. Um, I even hate walking, and Kate always makes fun of me because, like, we, uh, we would go to the zoo, and, like, every bench that I found, I would just sit down. <laughs> I just hate walking. <laughs> so August 2017, I told my boss to F off, and I quit my 9-to-5 job in Chicago. I was selling CRM systems, uh, Salesforce and Microsoft Dynamics. Then 2000, uh, or, uh, September 2017, I moved back to Cleveland into my parents' basement, which is a lot of fun. Um, so I focused 100% uh, of my time on my agency. I was basically a freelancer. I was it was just me. Um, but I celebrated my first 10K month. And that's me with Dan, Dan Henry on stage. Uh, in November through uh, December 2017, started my Facebook group. Went from zero to 1,000 members in, uh, in just five weeks. And I can't tell you how much that can change your life. Because just four months later, uh, I started my Facebook group, and I had a hundred, or had a six, uh, 60, I'm not good with numbers today, uh, $62,000 month, uh, just four, month at, four months after starting my Facebook group. Going from making $3,000 a month uh, in July of 2017 to February of 2018, making $62,000 in a month. Yeah, woo! <laughs> so that was pretty cool. And I, uh, I moved to the Bahamas. I'm like, I'm out of my parents' basement. I'm gonna move straight to the Bahamas where it's nice. <laughs> uh, and I started living the nomadic lifestyle. I went to Thailand, I went all over the United States. It's pretty cool, but it wasn't happily ever after. I worked really hard, and burnout, I broke down. Revenue plummeted, uh, and I had health problems. Went through adrenal fatigue. This is in September of 2018. So, uh, like any rational person, I went to uh, a Buddhist monastery <laughs> for seven days uh, in Escondido, uh, California, uh, Deer Park Monastery. It's awesome. It's 500 bucks for a week, uh, and uh, you just get to uh, eat vegan food, uh, take naps, and meditate. It's great. Um, <laughs> And uh, I realigned with my values and what I actually cared about. I discovered my dharma and my vision and what I'm on this earth to do. So we're going to be going through this uh, in, uh, in about an hour here. Um, but values are everything. What do you stand for? What do you stand against? Uh, and I was able to clear everything away and identify my top five values at the Deer Park Monastery. Um, and identify that my purpose is connecting people, um, bringing people together, like all of you in this room, and making that possible. And I got super clear on it and cleared out that space. So things took off. January through uh, February 2018, I moved to San Diego, found an amazing girlfriend, uh, surrounded myself with the best people, and started playing pickup basketball three times a week, minimum. 
uh, with Brad. Um, and those are my top three values. Loving relationship, Kate is my top value. Um, community, having a group of friends that just want to do hood rat stuff together. Uh, and then playing, uh, my third value is pick up sports. That, those are the first three things that I plug into my calendar every single week, because that's what means the most to me. My business works around that. So February 2019 through October 2019, hired teammates, hired 10. I spoke with Damon John on stage. I made uh, $165,000 in two days at a nine-person event. Uh, I helped three clients pass, pass the million-dollar marker, and now we're here at uh, Tribe Buyers Live. <laughs> so I'd like to bring up uh, Brad and Avery right now. Um, I am so eternally grateful for these two. Um, you've heard a lot about Brad already, um, but Avery is my right-hand man. Uh, this would not have been possible without him. Uh, he is our creative director at Tribe Buyers. Uh, if you see all of these beautiful posters, uh, they're all made by him. Um, and uh, I, I couldn't have done it without you, so I'd love to bring you up on stage. We have a couple mics. And then we got Brad coming up. So you guys saw my tribe. Uh, my tribe. Um, I'd love you guys to share your experience of building your tribes. So I'm, I'm a crier, so we'll just get that out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> I've had an interesting life experience. I have strabismus. I'm blind in my left eye, so I have a lazy and wandering eye. Starting my online business was the biggest challenge for me because it meant becoming visible to strangers who could make fun of me. And what's amazing is that the process of starting a business, finding people like Andrew and Brad, meeting people like all of you and being able to connect and serve has been the most amazing thing I've ever done and I found the community that I thought I was missing my entire life online. So that's why I do this work, because I felt like an outsider. I felt like a freak. And when I made the decision to be brave and be visible and put myself out there, I found my family. So like this work, what Andrew stands for, the reason I joined his team is because this changed my life. So I wanted to change all of your lives because it's super important for you to find that connection, to feel like you're not alone. And that's why we're all here. I, I have to share one more thing. Okay, go ahead. Um, I haven't talked Are about this. Are you gonna cry? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't talked about this publicly, but for years, I've looked into surgery for my strabismus. It can be corrected. A few months ago, Andrew was asking me questions about the surgery and how much it cost. In the middle of conversation, my phone dings, and he had PayPal'd me the entire amount for my surgery. So, <laughs> love you, <buddy. laughs> Everything he's talking about isn't bullshit. He really cares about all of you. And in November, I'm gonna be changing my life because of him. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I found out about that. I was just like blown away at not even the fact of the money to like, but like the fact that you 
thought about doing that. Like, I knew Avery for over a year. I never thought, like, the thought of doing that was like, it blew me away. Let's give it up for Andrew one more time. Oh, no. What are we talking about? Tribes. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Top that. <laughs> Can't. Man. Um, so my tribe obviously started with my first tribe was my family, who happens to be here now. My dad, my mom, my brother, my sister, they're in this room now. <laughs> right, they've seen me like grow so much and through like different mentors and, uh, and like just like moving to San Diego with Brad and with you. Like they, be my family believes in this so much that they're actually here. And they don't have businesses yet, but like they're actually here and so like, You've helped me bring my family back together. Like, <laughs> we went, we did this thing called Proof. Have anyone heard of a Proof Talk um, by Dan Levens, who's a client of yours? Um, and Andrew, we had a rock and mastermind. Um, and he, like, gifted me a Proof Talk to share my, what is my meaning, to figure out what my meaning of life is to the world. Um, and, like, my whole family came to that. And I talk about the in intervention my dad did on me during, before I went to rehab back in 2014. And uh, I wouldn't have had that conversation if it wasn't for you to help me bring my first try back together, which has like been such a wound for me for so long. Um, and then like the reason I was able to leave my job was because I had a, a really engaged Facebook group that I learned everything from you. And I had like, an, like a pool of people looking to me to lead and like, it's uncomfortable to have a tribe, to lead a tribe, but it's like, it's necessary to be responsible and to lead in this world. And like, you've given me the tools, the tactics, the strategies, and most of all, like the leadership quality to do that. Um, yeah, so anything, my invitation, if everyone is open to just kind of walk down this path that we're showing you this weekend of like what we're gonna show you is like, yes, it's marketing, but it's like, it's really about humanism and then helping you grow your business so you can help others in the same way. Um, yeah, that's out of the way. Thank you. When we're drawing a map, when we're trying to figure out where we need to go or want to go and how to get there, we need to be very honest with ourselves with where we're starting. That GPS needs to know exactly where we're starting or that Uber is gonna be down the street. You're gonna be chasing it down. Um, so, we're gonna start uh, with establishing a baseline, establishing a location, where are you at right now um, through this next segment. Now for everybody's favorite part, we're gonna find a partner so if you can get up, find a partner, one-on-one, -on -one, meet this, somebody who's not your business partner, somebody you have not met yet, shake their hand, greet them. So partner one, raise your hand. Partner two, you're starting. I'll do that over and over and over. I learned that from my mentor, Alex Moscow, so get used to it. Uh, and partner two, you're starting. You have 60 seconds on the clock, and you just want to brain dump. So if your brain's telling you got no more, you got no more, keep going. Fill in the space with whatever pops to your mind, and you are the only one that, that's talking. There's no back and forth here. And you have 60 seconds. And the prompt is what's your biggest fear? All right, now we're going to switch. Partner number one, you have 60 seconds on the clock. Only you speaking. What's your biggest fear? Go. All right, we're going to, uh, this is going to be fun. So we're going to go back to partner number two. We got new prompt, 60 seconds on the clock. What's your real biggest fear? 
Go a little bit deeper. Dig deeper. What's your biggest fear? What's your real biggest fear? 60 seconds on the clock for partner number two to air it all out. Ready? Go! Now we're going to switch it up. Uh, so partner number one, now you're going to share what is your real biggest fear. You got 60 seconds on the clock. Go! Thank you guys so much for being so engaged and just letting it all out and being honest and vulnerable and giving each other hugs. So that's what we're going to end on. If you want to give each other a hug, say thank you, partner. And now find a new partner. Find a new partner in the room. A new partner, somebody you have not met yet. And we're gonna do a new exercise with a new partner. So this prompt is actually really, really special to me. Um, I went to an event in uh, March uh, called Congruent Coach Live, uh, put on by my mentor, Alex Moscow, that actually prompted this event. Whoop, whoop for Alex. Um, and this prompt kicked me in the ass. It made me realize I was playing way too small, that I wasn't living up to my potential. Um, to give you a little backstory, uh, my dad was diagnosed with cancer four months before the event started. And that was still kind of new and raw with me. Um, and I realized if I hadn't been playing small in my life uh, for so long um, and numbing myself, numbing the pain that I went through for, for six years, um, maybe my dad would be at a better place with his health and not have cancer. Um, and I realized, holy shit, I'm playing really, really small in my life. Um, and have been, so I need to change that. So this prompt is super special to me. Uh, we have a few questions. Um, and first off, uh, partner number one, raise your hand. Good job. Partner number two, you're starting. Way to be quick. So the first question for partner number two is where in your life are you playing small? So we're going to put a little extra time on the clock. We're going to put 75 seconds on the clock. Air it all out. When you think you have nothing left, just whew, let it go. Um, so 75 seconds, partner number two. Where in your life are you playing small? Go. We're going to switch back to partner number two. We're going to put 60 seconds on the clock. And your new prompt is, what is playing small costing you? What is playing small costing you? So partner number two, uh, you have 60 seconds on the clock. What is playing small costing you? Go. We're going to switch it up. Partner number one, same question. What is playing small costing you? What is playing small costing you. Partner number one, you got 60 seconds. Go. Now this one really punched me in the heart at uh, Congruent Coach Live. Uh, and the prompt is, um, what is playing small costing your loved ones? What is playing small costing your loved ones? So we're going to start with partner number two on this one. Uh, you have 60 seconds on the clock. Go. Switch partners, same question. What is playing small costing your loved ones? What is playing small costing your loved ones? Go. So we have one more prompt, and I want to thank you guys so much for playing full out. Uh, if you're not knee to knee with your partner uh, just yet on the last prompt, knee to knee, look them in the eyes, get super deep, get close. Um, and the last prompt for you, 
with partner number two starting it out is what is playing small costing the world? By me playing small, the world is, I'm costing the world X. So partner number two, you got 60 seconds on the clock. Go. What is playing small costing the world? What is playing small costing the world? Partner number one, go. Go. 